Uh, before I go to the applicant to make a presentation uh, and then to the public for comment, I'm going to begin with our uh, planner, Mr. Mike Angrove, to outline for Council and the public the matters under consideration this evening. Mr. Angrove. Uh, good evening, Mayor and Council. This is a rezoning application for the property located at 818 to 826 Johnson Street. The application is to rezone a portion of the property from the CAHG zone, Harris Green District, to a site-specific zone in order to permit the use of storefront cannabis retailer. There are four permitted storefront cannabis retailers within 400 meters of the subject property. 851 Johnson Street is 76 meters away. 853 Cormorant is 138 meters away. 1402 Douglas is 297 meters away. And 778 Fort is 277 meters away. There are an additional three retailers within 400 meters that are not permitted at this time. There are no schools within 200 meters of the application. Comments pertaining to the application should be focused on the appropriateness of the land use, not on how the business is operated. The matter for Council's consideration is the supportability of the proposed land use. Excellent. Thank you very much. I will now invite the applicant to come forward to make a presentation to Council. And the applicant has 15 minutes to make a presentation. Good evening. Welcome. Thank you, Mayor. And uh, thank you, uh, Mayor and Council, for giving us this opportunity to uh, apply uh, for a rezoning at uh, our address, 822, 826 Johnson, but I understand the, the building that we are in is being zoned. That's why there's more uh, addresses uh, than it sounds. But uh, it is uh, very much an honor uh, to be here before you tonight in this process. And uh, I thought to start by giving the, the council and, and maybe some of those in attendance. Oh, sorry. There we go. Thank you. Maybe I'll do that. Yeah, yeah tilt the mic up. Um, I thought to uh, give uh, Mayor and Council and, and perhaps some of those in attendance uh, a bit of history of our club to start with. Uh, several of the letters in opposition to us uh, implied that this was some new uh, business uh, on the block and that uh, because there's already an application that's been approved across the street uh, that uh, we shouldn't be getting a, a second one. Um, well, as most of Council knows, uh, I should say all of council. Um, we have been in, in existence since uh, January 1996 when uh, I started, uh, when I lived in a van here in Victoria. And uh, one of the main reasons that I started was because I had met uh, patients who were using uh, cannabis edible products, uh, cookies in particular, people with AIDS that were having a very difficult time uh, eating and maintaining their health and they found these cannabis cookies to be incredibly beneficial for them and I thought that uh, this need for people with you know uh, AIDS, hepatitis C, arthritis was was great enough that I would risk uh, being arrested and, uh, and and open up the club and in fact it was at a city council meeting um, November of uh, 96 that uh, I really introduced our club uh, to the town showed some marijuana solve that we were making and uh, we've been very public uh, uh, with our work since that time. Uh, it was a few years later um, that uh, well, I first moved to an apartment but then uh, in March 2001 we moved to our current location uh, at 826 Johnson so we've we've been there for uh, almost 17 years now uh, operating in the same space. Uh, every single day we've been open for Christmas and any other uh, day that we've been arrested and that has occurred. Uh, uh, we were raided um, January, March, June 2002 and again in February 2003 though uh, myself and others continue to operate the club. Um, it was during that time that I actually ran for mayor uh, against uh, Mr. Izzet and uh, it was uh, obviously a publicity stunt really for me to stay out of jail more than than anything, uh, but it served its purpose and I became more familiar with many members of council uh, in that process and uh, it was something that, uh, you know, during that time period our, our club uh, came to council uh, uh, every single uh, opportunity. I think between uh, the first police raid in January 2002 and somewhere around 2005 I finally gave up. Um, the old council had very little power per se to, to help me. Um, the city council 
uh, was kind enough to pass a proclamation for International Medical Marijuana Day showing the general support for the use of cannabis as medicine. Uh, they passed another motion to encourage the police department to consider uh, cannabis and medical cannabis a low priority. And uh, they also requested that uh, Health Canada come to explain uh, what they were doing. And uh, Health Canada, um, since we started our club uh, around 2001, started to, to have a medical marijuana program uh, that has basically been inadequate since the day it was enacted. And so we you know, would tell the council this was the case. And uh, all of the charges laid in those four police raids were acquitted in court by one means or another. But in the meantime, Council requested for Health Canada to come and explain their programs. And when Health Canada uh, did do that uh, with, with staff, they wouldn't actually meet with the Council uh, itself, but uh, um, Council uh, understood how poorly uh, written the regulations were. And, and actually, um, Mayor Lowe uh, and, and Council wrote a letter, I believe it was 2006, to Health Canada stating that their programs were, were inadequate and needed to be reviewed. Um, and there were many reasons for that, not just the, the products that Health Canada has allowed and continues to allow are not sufficient for the medical needs of patients. And, uh, and the access uh, in the past has certainly been inadequate as well. Um, and the distribution method was too. And certainly, you know, we proved this in court through those cases and uh, we very much appreciated that letter. Um, but uh, as well, through all that, um, we, were, we also set in applications for a, a business license. Um, and uh, we uh, applied actually for a business license to sell pipes and, and bongs. And I'll never forget that evening. Uh, Mayor Alan Lowe was very upset at me for taking up that much time of council to ask for something that uh, he didn't think was possible. And so in many ways, I'm, I'm very, I guess I could say, tickled pink to be actually receiving uh, that uh, business license through this process, hopefully, if, with your support. Um, but at the time, we were told that uh, such a license was impossible, but that, in fact, we were a nonprofit society, and we didn't really require a, a license to keep operating, that the police who were present at that meeting weren't, weren't continuing to raid us every day, but uh, certainly... Uh, um, we continued to, to operate, even though we were denied that uh, at the time. But uh, through that process, uh, many of the council uh, that are still here really got to know me and our club. Many members would uh, come before you during these police raids and other critical moments, sharing their stories, which uh, uh, is uh, certainly uh, something that uh, uh, we very much appreciated at, at the time. Um, our club really did uh, at times have a, a gun to its head. And then uh, I guess the next big thing that, that happened along the way was 2009, um, our employee uh, Owen Smith was raided in an uh, apartment uh, baking cookies uh, for patients. Um, and so uh, we took that court case to the Supreme Court of Canada because uh, the laws were, were inadequate. They were uh, not allowing patients to to make and use extracts from the cannabis plant. And these extracts are far more beneficial than the actual plant material itself. And so for many patients, being able to use high concentrations of THC is very important. Uh, and so uh, um, that was a decision that, that we were you know, obviously very proud of. And, and so, uh, were, uh, it, it's something that uh, you know happened, I think, right around the time that this process started, and I, I uh, am, you know, obviously uh, uh, certain that that our fight and our victories uh, led to this uh, proliferation of dispensaries that council uh, has had to, to deal with and has led to this process, and uh, I, I certainly. Uh, thank Council for, for sticking their neck out years ago and, and looking to license dispensaries before the federal government came in with their legalization uh, plans, which in some ways has obviously uh, thrown things off somewhat. 
but in other ways uh, is uh, uh, giving council a lot more uh, direction and, and support now that they are moving that way, although it maybe hasn't seemed like they've given much to date. Um, and I will get back to that in a minute. But uh, in terms of the, you know, the, the application and some of the uh, um, concerns that the, the neighbors have about it, uh, certainly, uh, as I said, we've existed there for, for 17 years now, and if they have concerns about the neighborhood, uh, it, it's not from us. Uh, we've had, uh, for example, a, a safe consumption site for our patients uh, the entire time there. I understand Council's got it at second reading, so we don't actually have an exemption, but certainly uh, it's been critical not only to supply uh, medicine for patients, but they need a safe place to consume it. We have many patients that live in housing in Victoria that would not allow them to consume cannabis under any circumstances. They'd be evicted. And we find it ironic that we can't get uh, or haven't been able to obtain uh, a license to, to consume cannabis on our property when there's a safe injection drug site just you know two doors down. So if, if the council and, and government is going to allow for that, we feel that you know having the the smoking room uh, is important, but my understanding is that that really isn't actually a part of the, the zoning here. This is more about a land use issue, and so uh, I, I don't mean to, to dwell on that, but that's something that we don't want people to think that that's not happening. We're not afraid of it. We've been doing it uh, forever, and uh, or not forever, but for the 17 years, and in none of the letters uh, to council is that a concern. They don't you know, complain about the smell in the neighborhood that there's all this smoking. Um, it's uh, something that, for the most part, they're not aware of at all. And if we weren't uh, so open about it, uh, they, they wouldn't be uh, aware at this point. Um, and so, uh, as I say, um, I don't really want to uh, take too much more of, of your time. I don't think I've, uh, you know, given the. Okay, well, you get your point. Oh, yeah. um, but uh, uh, it is uh, something that uh, there are uh, many uh, patients who've come to depend upon our unique product line. Uh, we are different than the other dispensaries in that we are a true medical compassion club. We have stuck to our mandate of uh, requiring patients to have a documentation of a diagnosis from a doctor. And we will continue to do that under the new uh, legalization system. We are not uh, interested in profiting off recreational users. We have a lot of unique products made off of unique strains that patients aren't able to find elsewhere. We have suppositories and creams and uh, edible capsules and things that uh, are, are keeping people alive. Uh, and it's something that uh, many of us are, are very committed to. And it, and it wouldn't surprise council to find out that even if we got turned down the zoning hearing, we'd be fighting you all the way because we're never going to stop doing what we're doing because patients and that we are helping um, are, are truly uh, driving us to, to do our work. And uh, it's something that, uh, as, as council uh, is, is quite aware, uh, my experience with my, my partner, Gail, who passed a year and a half ago, um, has taken a lot out of me. Um, it's been a while since I've been able to be here and part of and because of that and actually last year I even quit my activism um, temporarily uh, because uh, that had taken too much out of me. Um, but I've come back to my, my club to help it um, because it was not only struggling internally um, but we foresee these new provincial federal regulations to be uh, potentially destroying our club and so uh, we will not be uh, likely complying with the new uh, Prohibition 2.2, as we would like to call it, uh, because it would really stop us from being able to access uh, the products that our patients require to live, including the extracts and, and other medicines. And so uh, our club, despite this rezoning and despite legalization coming in, uh, and our patients are truly fighting for our lives. And. Uh, well, uh, hopefully uh, none of that affects the rezoning hearing. Again, uh, it is something that we are, are very committed to our patients. And what we are seeing happening in, in other dispensaries and with the, the, the government uh, is not adequate. And uh, we will continue to provide these 
life-saving services uh, until such time as the government does a better job. Thank you very much for your time. Have a good evening. Thank you very much. Uh, is there someone further from the applicant's team? There's about a minute and 20 seconds left, so go ahead. You can complete the presentation for the applicant. Hi, sorry. I uh, wanted to jump in there just because I remember there were a few points made with this land use that I would like to address specifically as the applicant. Um, the Victoria Cannabis Buyers Club, where we are, is actually a total of, I believe it is 138 square meters. Um, I know that the major concern with us has been that um, we are within 400 meters of another dispensary. The other dispensary that is in question is a total square meterage of, I believe, it, it's like less than 30. Between the two of us combined are well under 200 square meters. And there are other clubs that have been granted um, you know, their regulations that are bigger than that size. And it doesn't seem to upset any city plans or any issues with land use um, when that size has, you know, been supplying the cannabis community. Um, the other thing that I would really like to address and remind the council too is that there are other fail-safes the city has in place when it comes to land use. Just because the land is zoned to be something, it has nothing to do with the operator. In theory, if we were to not be here or shut down within a year or in a couple months, that land use can... I, I apologize. I need okay. to stop you there. It's a statutory process, no so a very uh, have to be very crisp with the uh, rules. Thank so you. thank you to the applicant. This is now an opportunity for members of the public who wish to speak on this application to do so. Um, each member of the public has five minutes to speak. Uh, same as before, the clock is... Um, yellow when you get to one minute and uh, red when you get to zero. Uh, and again, same with before, we just ask for the public who is listening to just simply be here and to be listening. So uh, welcome, good evening, go ahead. Hi, my name is Thurlis, Thurlis Lochran. And um, I've been a member of the campus. Sorry, one, uh, sorry to interrupt you, sir. One thing I forgot to say is we do ask for these uh, public rezoning applications that you state your name and your address for the record. Thank you. Okay. Um, my, um, my name is Thurlis Lochran, and I live at uh, 1520 Fort Street. And um, I've been going to the Cannabis Buyers Club for 10 years, and as Ted explained, it's been open for 20 years. And for many, it's a total pioneer in medical marijuana. And all the other clubs have been following and benefiting from all the hard work that Ted has done and dealing with all the resistance from police. And... Um, I'd like to say that for many of us who have a health condition and need medical marijuana, it's the only place to actually consume it on, 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 pro, on the property. And as Mayor Lisa Helps said, I believe you said, that um, well, the, 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 the space for smoking marijuana is a, is a health concern rather than a business concern. And um, our um, chef, our leader, Ted Smith, um, uh, he's, he's worth 100 lawyers and what he's done for the cause. And... Um, uh, I'd like to say something in French. Je voudrais dire quelque chose en français. Que ça fait dix ans que je suis un membre du le club Cannabis Buyers Club. Mais ça fait vingt ans que c'était ouvert pour vendre le chambre. Et um, c'est le premier à Victoria. Et c'est le premier uh, magasin du chambre au Canada. Um, notre chef Ted Smith, il vaut cent avocats. Ce qu'il a fait pour la légalisation do marijuana. Et, um, la, la petite chambre, la chambre de fumée, c'est um, c'est très important parce que c'est le seul endroit dans la ville pour fumer. So, um, anyways, I'd like to say thank you very much and merci beaucoup. Thank you very much. Uh, next speaker, please. Hi. Um, so my name is Julia Vaintrop. I uh, live at... Actually, sorry, um, I, I hate to do this, but you were presented as one of the applicants, and so now this is an opportunity for the public to speak. Gotcha. So okay. thank That's you. Right. Okay. Uh, next speaker, please. Good evening, Mayor and City Council. My name is Michael Patterson. I live at 834 Johnson Street. I'm a long-term tenant of the 834. I've been a member for several years of the Victoria Cannabis Buyers Club. I fully support this organization that has existed for more than 16 years. My experience with this, orga with this organization has been safe 
and the very knowledgeable staff have helped many people as well as myself make safe, informed decisions on available alternative mes medicines for pain management. The VCBC is a wholesome club with patients' best interests. There are many other clients in my building as well that use the resources available here. This club is a very respectful to the community and to our governing laws. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, next speaker, please. Good evening. Welcome. Good evening. Um, my name is... You can tilt the microphone down so oh. it's more comfortable for you. Okay. There you go. Thanks. My name is uh, Deborah Didick, and I live at 208477 Superior Street, just behind the legislature. Um, I was... Uh, I beat stage 3 cervical cancer, uh, basically with cannabis and growing my own organic product. I was able to do this in the boonies of Powell River. And before I moved here, I went through all the tests. I was declared cancer-free. Now, due to my myriad of health issues, I was smoking up to 20 joints a day just to deal, you know, with everything I deal with. Since moving to Victoria and getting involved with Ted Smith's Victoria Cannabis Buyers Club, I now only smoke maybe two little pipefuls at night. I have a half a cookie so I can sleep. And I mean, uh, these products from Ted's Club have helped me get to the point like without getting into any long stories, I could barely walk out my apartment door, let alone walk a block without having to rest. And, uh, and also to face people. And because of Ted's, uh, Ted and Gail's products, and I use a lot of them, I use them topically, internally, but what I really, really like is that I'm not smoking 20 joints a day. I, I eat a half a Buddha ball or a, bud, a, you know, a daytime buddy. I'm back to the point where I'm actually facing people and members of council. I'm just amazed. But also, I'm, my health has been restored to the point where I walked all the way from my apartment here tonight. Now, this is what Ted and the founding members of this club have given me. I, I see them on the news every now and then thinking, how did they do that, you know? And it's because of these people that I'm alive. I beat cancer. It's because of Ted and the founding members of this club that I'm back working, you know, for getting paid for my labor. And I've been able to have a job for three years now, and I have not called in sick one day. I will always love Ted and Gail and the club for what they have given me with the knowledge that they have given me, plus also the products that they produce. So when Ted says that, you know, um, I, I don't support any of the other clubs. I have my two clubs because I know their products are organic, ethically produced, and I don't have to worry about any Health Canada approved herbicides, pesticides, or fungicides. So I support TED and the VCBC um, until the bloody plant is finally legal. It's, it's a herb, it's a plant. I still dream of turning my home province of Saskatchewan into one big hemp farm and so we can pull out all the poisons that Monsanto has put into them. So anyway, thank you, thank you, thank you for being an awesome council, actually. And um, I really do hope you will grant us the license. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Good evening, welcome. Good evening. My name is Mike Campbell. I live at 711 Johnson Street. I'm a member of the Victoria Cannabis Buyers Club. Um, 
I'd just like to point out the importance, um, uh, the resource of the uh, Cannabis Buyers Club as a meeting place to, to meet other people who uh, suffer from uh, like ailments. Um, in my case, cannabis has helped me with anxiety uh, as well as physical pain. And I've been hearing stories um, from the other members of the Cannabis Buyers Club over the years I've been going there. Um, incredible stories of, of the non-working for these patients of uh, pharmaceutical drugs, um, even to the point of making themselves sick on pharmaceutical drugs because it's what their doctor recommended. And then um, seeing these people change to cannabis and getting uh, educated from the knowledgeable, very knowledgeable staff at the Cannabis Buyers Club and uh, having their pain reduced. And I've heard success story, many success stories just from talking to the other people in the club. Um, I think it would be a loss of a community meeting place if the license weren't granted to keep this um, smoking room open. And I think also maybe some of the words have to change in the language of the cannabis discussion. Um, the word stoner just doesn't seem to be appropriate for medical patients in, in my mind. Um, maybe we can just uh, th think about that. But I'd just like to support Ted uh, I've known Ted since almost, almost for 20 years, uh, on and off. Um, and he's really has the interests of uh, medical patients uh, foremost in his heart. And he's just, like he said, he's just trying to relieve pain for his patients and uh, keep them alive. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, next speaker, please. Thank Good you. evening, welcome. Thank you. Uh, Rosalind Compton, and I live at 301834 Johnson Street. Uh, I've lived there for two and a half years, and I also rent space in the city centre storage building, which is 826 Johnson Street. Uh, I rent space for, uh, as an art studio there, and I do have some private students who come up. Uh, I would like to say that I, I, I don't want to debate the efficacy of cannabis whatsoever. However, I think this location um, is difficult because, um, for one, the smell is atrocious outside and inside the building. It makes it very difficult for me to take people in there without excusing the smell. And also the fact that there are always people standing outside underneath the sign that says, no smoking within so many meters of this notice and they're all out there smoking so I, I believe there's a fire hazard if they are smoking in the building and I just would like you to consider that this building needs to be reviewed um, in terms of bylaws and what can and can't be done in there Thanks. thank you so much uh, next speaker please good evening welcome Thank you. Thank you, Mayor, Council. My name is Peter Tatchell. I live at 1020 View Street in Victoria. Um, I addressed Council last year um, regarding the, uh, the issue um, um, between medical and recreational marijuana and how it had been defined uh, in terms of land use, rezoning, and bylaws. And it was determined at that time that there was no uh, distinction between recreational and medical marijuana and how that interplayed with the uh, zoning and the bylaws. Fine. Um, the reason I asked that question at that time um, um, uh, was because about a year and a half ago, um, I was admitted into in, into the Jubilee, and I had uh, I was diagnosed with cirrhosis of the of the liver. I was discharged with the information that I would die without a transplant. I had two years to live without one. Um, I would need a blood transfusion every month until I received a transplant. And a post-transplant life means a compromised life with immune-suppressant drugs and a high vulnerability to sickness and rejection. So 
Um, upon discharge, under the guidance of friends and a lot of research, I discovered that medical marijuana had properties that can help with the destruction of fatty liver cells, um, uh, the scarred liver tissue, and stabilized blood enzymes. I did a lot of research, and I kept detailed records of my treatment. And since then, uh, since then, I've been to the transplant clinic in Vancouver twice. Uh, once I was on the transplant list, and now I'm not on it. I'm scheduled to go back. My liver specialist told me that I no longer have cirrhosis and I'm not on any prescription drugs. My blood tests are stable and still improving, and I can attribute my recovery to an active and healthy life directly to medical marijuana. My liver doctor told me he had never seen a recovery like this before. I told him I had been taking THC and CBD, uh, the active uh, ingredients in medical marijuana, and he said he wasn't surprised. Um, in the, uh, by the light of my recovery. Um, this illustrates the gap between what the medical uh, profession approves, the reality of the effectiveness of medical marijuana, and the fact that we are here to emphasize the importance of the work that VCBC does in closing this gap of the medical uh, profession and the reality of the effectiveness of medical marijuana. VCBC closes that gap. In fact, they act basically what I consider a white helmet pharmacy, providing medicine at reduced costs to those in dire need of treatment and could be viewed as a healthcare outreach center for those in need as opposed to a dispensary. VCBC not only offers health advice, dispenses medicine, but also provides a safe place for both the physically and mentally challenged to receive a friendly smile and a kind word making their lives better in ways that does not involve marijuana. I would like to thank Council for allowing uh, dispensaries, and I would also like to note that in, when you rezone a property, I think that the Council still has the power to approve a business license. So even if a, a, an area has been zoned for uh, cannabis retail, or whatever the technical term may be, and VCBC goes out of, uh, out of business and a, a different firm would like to open up, which may not meet the same criteria that the council might uh, ag agree with. I think at that point you could deny a business license and thereby uh, prevent any unsavory characters continuing business in that space. So in the sense that, well, first of all, seeing as VCBC has been there for, I think Ted said, 17 years now, has been in operation for, for, for 22, I don't think they're planning to shut down right away either. But even if they did, you would still have the power to control that space any way that the council saw fit, I believe. Okay, correct me if I'm wrong. Thank you very much for your time. I hope everyone had a good holiday and all the best for 2018. It's been my pleasure to speak with you today. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, next speaker, please. Good evening. Welcome. Uh, thank you. Um, good evening, Mayor and Council. Uh, my name is Bill Stewart. Um, I, I uh, actually don't live in Victoria. I live just in just outside of Victoria in Sandwich at uh, 3972 Cary Road. But I, I am a member, a long-standing member of uh, VCBC. I've been a member for about 10 years now. And uh, as, as being a member of the club, it's uh, changed my health, uh, transformed my life. Basically, uh, when I became a member of the club 10 years ago, I was uh, um, taking quite a lot of pharmaceuticals. I was having uh, dealing with. Uh, anxiety attacks that were putting me in Eric Martin Institute about once a year. Uh, it's 10 years later. I don't use any pharmaceuticals at all. I haven't, uh, I've had one in the last 10 years. I've had one episode that's, that's a number of years ago that's uh, landed me there. Um, my, you know, my, my mental and physical health are much better. Uh, some of the, some of the products there, particularly, um, suppositories, which are uh, very beneficial for, I suffer from prostate problems, uh, can only really find there. So it's, it's a very unique club that way. Um, I did uh, take a glance at some of the letters of, of objection. Um, I noticed a number of them were just really objecting to cannabis itself, which uh, I think there's a more informed opinion about that. Uh, 
Um, I do, um, I am actually, I, as well, too, uh, I do sit on the board of uh, the Vancouver Island Compassion Society, and we are one of the clubs that is within uh, 200 meters of, of this club, and we have no objection to them, of course. Uh, we, are, we face out north onto Cormorant Street, and they face out south onto Johnson Street. There's no real, there's no problem there with, with any sort of overlap. Um, I do understand that some people do have problems with concentration of the number of, uh, of, of cannabis retailers there are within a certain area, but it is a it is a downtown core, and I think a certain amount of concentration is to be expected there. I I, I believe when the city set out to set these bylaws initially, um, one of their concerns was as you were watching the uh, saturation happening in Vancouver, and you set out to have these bylaws because you didn't want to see this happening here in Victoria. And I think you, I think the bylaws have achieved that. I think you've managed to to get on top of the that growth and. So, uh, so given that, I don't see there, there's any reason really why the club's uh, application should be rejected. And again, thank you. Thank you very much. Next speaker, please. Good evening. Welcome. Thank you. So my name is uh, Seth Ainsley. I'm a resident at uh, 1026 Johnson Street, just a couple blocks up from the club. I've. Uh, actually been a member of the Ted's Club for about almost coming on 10 years now. I remember when I first, uh, I first joined the club, I was 18 years old, and they were very quick to make sure that I was indeed 18 years old, had ID, had proper ID. I remember it being a bit of a sticking point for me at the time. And uh, throughout, uh, throughout time, being a member of Ted's Club and uh, some other uh, clubs in Vancouver and in Victoria, never found one uh, as friendly uh, with his staff as welcoming, uh, as just very, very friendly and uh, an open environment. So you didn't ever feel challenged going in. Uh, everyone was willing to, to talk to you to explain what was available. Um, and I suffer, I suffer from epilepsy, and it is mostly controlled with the uh, prescription medication that I take. But um, I do use cannabis occasionally for helping to control that uh, in situations where I feel it isn't otherwise. So just wanted to drop my two cents and uh, just say in my experience that uh, in that block, Ted's uh, Club has always been a bit of a beacon of, you know, shining, shining light and friendliness on that block. So I hope it continues to be so. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, next speaker, please. Good evening. Welcome. Good evening, Council and Mayor. Thank you very much for letting me speak today. My name is Stephen Pittner. I live at uh, 713 Karen Road in Esquimalt. I have been a member of Cannabis Buyers Club, uh, geez, for probably over 20 years. And uh, at least ever since we've been at that location at 826 Johnson Street. And I got to tell you, nobody's really complained about us until all of a sudden now, here we are. And by the way, thank you very much for your open-mindedness and even allowing Kim Compassion clubs and dispensaries in Victoria. We have set the, the tone for this country, and thank you very much. You all deserve a, a great deal of thanks for that. But I don't think we should be concerned too much about density. Uh, I gotta tell you, only the good will survive. Uh, all those lousy clubs that are just for profit, that people are gonna find out that that's really all they're for, and they're not gonna last very long. Um, the true ones that are going to survive are the ones that are actually helping people with their medical needs. And that's what our mandate has been since we started. And uh, it would be sh such a shame to stop now. Um, the store across the street from us that uh, got their license first, uh, that person has three other stores. I don't know why he needs to have one right across the street from us. We've been there for 17 years, a long 10 years before they even thought about putting a store there. It was a rug store before that. Uh, the apartment building next door that some people have been concerned about, uh, that, that building wasn't even there when we were there. A lot of those people moved in that building knowing there was a dispensary next door. Why are they complaining now? Why did they even move in then if they didn't want to have a dispensary next door? These are all just questions that roam around in my head about how, how we've come to this point. I sure hope that uh, you approve this uh, zoning variance. Uh, we want to help people in this community have a better opportunity of dealing with their illnesses. 
and uh, we've gone a great length of time going through court case after court case after court case to establish where we are now. Matter of fact, if it wasn't for us winning that 7 nothing decision in the Supreme Court over edibles, none of this recreational business would be happening. The courts didn't order the government to recreationalize. They ordered the government to make available for people that need this for medical needs to have the option of using derivatives so we could make a cookie for ourselves, so that we could use it how it is as it should be used. It's a herb. Herbs are meant to be used for cooking. Yeah, lots of different plants and spices and herbs are for digestive needs and all sorts of other health benefits. And that was one of the points that helped make this case for this plant to be used as a medicine. The courts didn't say recreationalize it now. That's all just muddying the waters about all the medical breakthroughs that have been found out about this plant. We shouldn't let that be destroyed. We shouldn't let a bureaucracy of fears, you know, concerns, legitimate concerns. Nobody wants to see young children having access to something. That can all be handled with, you know, the teaching people about the responsibilities of the products they buy and keeping out of reach of children and labeling product, products properly and, you know, that type of thing. And most of the people using it medically aren't really smoking it that much. They're vaporizing it or they're using edibles in some fashion or another. So these are just points to think about. I hope you extend our, our variances and I think you all deserve a great deal of congratulations for making it this far. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, next speaker, please. For a second time, and for a third and final time. Okay, seeing no further speakers, um, I will turn to council and ask if you have any questions for uh, the applicant or for staff. Yes, Councillor Isaac. Uh, one speaker referenced uh, business licensing and um, in terms of council discretion. My understanding is that council's discretion primarily relates to the rezoning, and that if it's approved, uh, the business licensing. It it's a fairly technical matter that's delegated to staff to issue that license. Can staff just speak to that? Mr. Coates? Through my help, um, the short answer to that is yes. So the, the business regulation uh, component comes after councils, uh, for example, pass to rezoning. And so there are technical requirements that each business operator would have to meet uh, in accordance with the city's bylaw. And then and only then, once those technical requirements are met as a business license issued, so the matter clearly here is is the land use question before council and the technical side would take care of itself after that. So council has no discretion on business licenses. That's a matter of staff uh, operations. That's correct. Thank you. Councilor Isaac, go ahead. And so in terms of the issuance of the license, now once a license been, has been issued, I know this gets a little beyond the rezoning, but just to understand the implications if this is approved. Um, so there's enforcement of regulations and that also takes place with respect to business licenses. Presumably they could be revoked if the provisions weren't adhered to? Through my help. So yes, so um, a business license is issued and in the city's uh, cannabis related business regime, there's an ongoing uh, inspection and monitoring component um, on an annual basis and business licenses are reviewed annually. Um, Non-compliance could end up uh, resulting in the revocation of a business license through the processes uh, that the community charter has for that, which is essentially a hearing before council. Thank you. Uh, seeing no further questions, I'll call the hearing closed. And I will ask Mr. Coates to present the motion for our consideration. Mr. Coates? And that's for council to consider a third reading of the zoning regulation amendment bylaw number 17 094. Thanks. Moved by Councillor Isaac, seconded by Councillor Loveday. I'll go to the mover and seconder and then I'll look for other speakers. Go ahead, Councillor Isaac. Uh, this location has uh, been the site of a cannabis dispensary uh, for more than 20 years. Uh, for that, most of that period, it was a completely unlawful use, where, as we heard from some of the speakers and presenters, there was sort of a pitch battle uh, between the operators and law enforcement. Uh, in the last few years, the city retreated from that more heavy-handed approach uh, to the distribution of cannabis and directed staff to consult the public uh, on a regulatory regime. Um, that's the system that the city adopted, and over the last year, we've considered these kinds of applications. Uh, several have already been approved, including one that was referenced uh, across the street. Um, 
And so now we are seeing an application that is within uh, quite close to an existing dispensary. Uh, there's a policy that Council has adopted with respect to a buffer zone between dispensaries, but that is uh, only a policy and Council is at liberty to make de decisions uh, if, we, if they, it feels that a specific application uh, is a supportable use of the land. Um, having seen, seen this particular parcel of land being used for this specific use uh, for more than two decades, uh, I think I can support it. Um, it uh, has a, a clientele uh, established. It has a, a clearly established uh, administrative structure. Uh, it's developed protocols and systems to mitigate the impacts on others. Uh, certainly those impacts could be mitigated to a greater extent. And I think bringing this establishment into the regulatory system uh, will strengthen that and will introduce stronger criteria to ensure uh, that uh, this business doesn't have a negative impact on others. Uh, but I'm confident uh, that those issues can be addressed uh, if this uh, bylaw is approved and a business license issued. Thank you, uh, Councillor Loveday as a seconder. No comments? Okay. Other speakers? Yes, Councillor Young. Um, well, I'm not going to support this. Um, nothing personal. I have opposed all of the applications that are have come forward. Um, and uh, basically, some, some of the reasons um, uh, we've heard tonight, uh, the, the Council um, has adopted a policy of uh, limiting numbers by restricting um, uh, dispensaries within a certain distance of other dispensaries, which means that, in fact, um, uh, this dispensary is against our uh, the policy that Council has adopted. And if Council were following that policy, which I don't know whether it will or not, um, I guess we'll know in a few minutes, um, will we'll be, uh, we'll be refused. Um, I, I didn't like the idea of the uh, first come, first serve policy. I uh, have real concerns about um, uh, the principles we're using, which are supposed to be based on land use. Uh, we're, as I think you can expect, getting a lot of pushback from uh, dispensaries that we have refused under our policy, and I suppose we'll probably have um, legal arguments about some of those. And um, as one of the speakers said, a whole lot of these dispensaries are going to be going out of business uh, pretty shortly after legalization because um, as various taxes come into play, uh, supplies are changed and so forth. And uh, so to some degree, we're uh, creating a lot of um, um, disturbance and upset uh, for an issue um, that is going to get sorted out, I expect, uh, in a little while. Uh, the one really tough issue is one that uh, one of the speakers mentioned, which is uh, the issue of smoke and the fact that um, it's when it gets when it comes to smoke, it's it's not a personal issue anymore. Uh, it's affecting other people, and uh, that is an issue that uh, we are going to have to be working through. Uh, as we move forward in this and as legalization comes about. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Lucas. Thank you. And I also will not be able to support this tonight, not because um, this is not a, a, a good business. We've heard a testimonial from a lot of people here tonight. But I was one of the councillors who brought forward the uh, policy on the distance, and that was through um, hearing from our downtown residents association and some of our other neighborhood associations that had a great deal of concern about how many cannabis dispensaries and um, uh, would be distance apart from each other. So for me, it isn't about the business. It is about the land use and the distance that we spoke about. And being one of the councillors who did adopt this uh, or asked for this policy to be put forward, I don't feel that I can uh, support this. Thank you. I don't see anyone putting up their hands, so I'll go next. Um, I, am, I am having a great deal of trouble uh, with this. 
Um, I feel like this is probably one of the hardest decisions that I'm going to be asked to make in this term of council, and I'm going to say what I'm going to say, and then I'm going to listen to others to, uh, to help me. Um, I'm, I'm torn here um, between a lot of things that I value. Um, so I value persistence and hard work, which clearly uh, has gone on uh, for the last 20 years uh, with this club. Uh, I value community. Um, I value a sense of belonging. Um, and I also value fairness, good process, and, and keeping our commitments. Uh, and all of those things, half of those things line up on the side of approving this, and half of those things line up on the side of turning this down. Um, if council were to turn this down uh, this evening, um, what I would strongly uh, urge and, and support um, is a temporary use permit at this location. I've already consulted with our staff whether we could grant that tonight, uh, but we can't. We would have to go through a separate process, uh, a temporary use permit, so that the Victoria Cannabis Buyers Club could find another location uh, that is not within uh, 400 metres of another dispensary uh, in order to continue its operations. Um, later this evening, we'll be discussing a number of temporary use permits which the council has decided to reject, um, but I think this is an exceptional circumstance when this uh, club has been in this location for, for close to 20 years. Um, and, uh, you know, I can't ignore the fact that there is not only an approved dispensary on the other side of the street, but an approved dispensary at the corner of Douglas and Johnson. So I am really, really struggling with this. Um, but if it were to be uh, turned down tonight, I would strongly urge the VCBC to put in an application for a temporary use permit to give yourselves time to find another location. Um, and I would be willing to support that, um, you know, subject, of course, to hearing from the public and so on, um, if it should come back to this table. So I'm going to listen to my colleagues, uh, and I just want to, everyone to know uh, that I'm having a very difficult time. Councillor Thornton, Joe. Uh, thank you, Mayor. And uh, sorry, my comments aren't going to make it any easier <laughs> for you because this is one that uh, I'm having difficulty with as well. It's because. Uh, Councillor Lucas and I were the ones that brought the extended distance uh, and we did that because we heard from uh, places like the neighborhood associations who said that they didn't want a proliferation of, of dispensaries on their block. That being said, um, it, uh, it's difficult because this is a, a uh, I guess a, a business or a nonprofit that's been around for uh, 20 years, uh, probably when Nobody was at our council chambers talking about uh, cannabis and the need for legalization and the uh, important health issue, um, uh, 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 the assistance it provides for many for their health issues. Uh, even before uh, this topic even became something that people would come to council, um, Ted Smith and, and many of his um, uh, members would be at council in the, in the, in the years that I've been uh, at this table. And uh, when we talk about uh, whether this location could be problematic or, or is a good land use, uh, I, I had to actually look at the picture twice of where the location was, was beca because I, uh, I uh, there was a business there, Scope Imprinting, for many, many years. And as a secretary of an organization, I had to go there probably once a month to pick up name tags, trophies, everything else. And I never knew that this business, that the, the Compassion Club was there. And the fact that I didn't know means that uh, it wasn't something that st stood out to me. But of course, this is a land use decision and whether uh, it's appropriate in this location and within close proximity. I, I do um, reiterate that, uh, and I've said that to many, when we extended it to 400 meters, it was a guideline and there was going to be, whether it was on the next block or made it that uh, it what didn't seem uh, that the 400 um, needed to be, uh, because it was a guideline, we could consider it or not consider it. Uh, so this may be one that may um, warrant a, a shorter distance. Uh, but I'm having difficulty because, as, uh, as it was mentioned, I was one of the ones that brought forward the 400 meters, and whether for land use, uh, whether we uh, need two uh, dispensaries in such close proximity and three on uh, the Johnson Street uh, 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 street a couple of blocks down. So once again, I'm looking forward to hearing other comments before I make my final decision. Thank you. Uh, other speakers? I uh, guess Councillor Loveday, go ahead. Yeah, so I am able to support this tonight. Um, 
listening to the the all the speakers tonight, there is a lot of support for this application, and you know it, it's moving to hear the way that this operation has positively impacted uh, many people who have uh, used their services to gain access to medicine. And the truth is we wouldn't be here having this conversation if it wasn't for the uh, for this organization and uh, for, for Ted um, in terms of moving the, the needle towards legalization and regulation of cannabis. Um, those stories are meaningful in they show support for the land use, but the actual emotional stories behind it, I, I don't think are legal factors within this land use decision. They, they show support for the operation, uh, but the whole, the whole history in terms of a rezoning doesn't, isn't the major factor in the decision for me. What is, is the fact that this has been operating in this way, in this location, for 20 years. And to me, that shows that since it's, it's operated, it showed uh, that it isn't, we've, we did receive a, a few letters of um, disapproval from, from neighbors, most of which did mention that it was a new, organ, a new operation, which I, I think shows they don't even know it's there. Um, and they don't want a new one. Um, and so I respect that, because there's already visible ones on the street. But it's been there for 20 years. It has had uh, little negative impact on the neighbors over that time. And uh, I think that shows that it uh, should be supported tonight. Thank you, Councillor Loveday. Uh, would anyone else like to speak? Yes, Councillor Alto. Well, just briefly, um, I will be supporting this tonight. Uh, and not for, uh, not for the compelling stories that were told, which are, of course, uh, very moving. But as we all refer back to, this is more of a land use issue than anything. But for the... For the single issue uh, raised by my colleague, uh, Councillor Loveday, and that is that uh, as a land use issue, I can't think of a better example of how land use has been in existence for more than two decades, uh, causing no problems whatsoever. Uh, it seems not only has there been a series of um, recitations of how people have not even noticed that it's there, uh, but right to the sense of when they did notice, they kind of were remarking on the fact that it's operated so well for so long. Uh, and so from a strictly land use perspective, I'm able to support this uh, by virtue of the fact that it has uh, managed to function remarkably well with uh, little attention, certainly in the last decade, uh, once uh, there has been a change in sort of the acceptance level of this type of property use uh, and this type of, of um, use of, uh, of cannabis. So uh, discounting, not discounting from the perspective of, of um, undervaluing them, but discounting it from the perspective of decision-making on a land use issue, uh, the stories that were attended by the folks who've used it, uh, given its, uh, its use uh, at this site and the way that it has been uh, heard and seen uh, and uh, lived well with its neighbors for the last two decades, I will be able to support this tonight. Thank you. Um, Councillor Coleman? Uh, thank you. Um, it's funny how we want to be driven by uh, policy, but we also uh, get hung up on emotion and, and compassion. Um, we do try and, and rationalize our decisions by talking about policy, and I think the, the difficult sticking point for some uh, members of council may be that we have a policy of separation between units, uh, which started off as 200 meters, and then we extended it to 400 meters. Um, but as the staff report from July 28th points out, the policy, which is now 400 meters, does note that council may consider variances to the separation distances, for instance, in locations such as downtown or a large urban village. Um, so there is uh, the latitude for us to consider the vagaries of a specific application. Now, it does have a, uh, another dispensary 76 meters away across and up the street. Um, but interestingly, we have a letter of support from that operation in our package saying this is a different animal and not a, a straight-up competitor, I suppose. Um, we should also remember that we did put, when we dealt with this and, and sent it to public hearing, we did put some constraints around the application. So uh, only one storefront cannabis retailer would be permitted to operate in the, on the property. So there, there isn't a, a 
extension of that through the building. Um, and it would be restricted to the ground floor and would be restricted to the maximum floor of uh, 115 square meters, which is in keeping with the size of the existing operation. Um, there are impacts. There's no question. Um, and tighter control, one of the people who came tonight and said it's about the smoke that, that wafts out and those things, those are impacts. Um, and they particularly uh, impact the local, uh, the, the very proximate local neighbors. Um, I, I, I recognize that that is an issue that may have to be dealt with, um, but I think the 20 year operation of this and the constraints that we've put around um, give me some solace because much of the presentation tonight was about the emotional, compassionate reason to support this application. And as a number of my colleagues have said, we try to deal with land use. Um, so I understand the difficulty that other members of council are having, but this is one I can support. Thank you, uh, Councillor Madoff. Yes, thank you. Uh, now the language that we can use to describe this uh, decision that's ahead of us, we could describe it, I suppose, the way that I'm looking at it is that, for me, it's a difficult issue, but it's not a difficult decision. And what makes the issue difficult is that there are so many things surrounding this application, whether it's the stories that we've heard tonight or uh, our own experience with the club and what their track record has been like and the advocacy that they've done and how they've operated that we have to separate. And I think that is very difficult to do. But at the same time, as some of my colleagues have alluded to, in this instance, we have the advantage of 20 plus years of experience of this kind of operation being on that site, which is not something that we have in all of the other instances. As has also been pointed out, the policies there is guideline and we need to look at that very carefully. I tend to want to support policy because I think it's there for a reason, but it's not meant to be intractable either. And uh, I think as Councillor Thornton Joe said, the fact that she was you know, patronizing an adjacent business for some years and never even knew it was there. And I still find it when I go up the street that you barely notice that it's there. I think when we look at the size of it as well, the nature of the building, all of those kinds of things um, give me the, the um, I suppose, leeway to, to balance what the operation is, what its history has been in terms of land use, and what our intention was with the policy. And in, in this instance, I don't see those as mutually exclusive. I think the concerns that we had that created the policy have simply not come to bear upon this location and upon this operation. And so for those reasons, I will be supporting the application. Thank you very much, uh, and thanks, Council, for your wise counsel. I now have a decision that I'm going to make. Uh, I will call the question. Uh, all of those in favor of third reading of the bylaw? Okay, those opposed, two opposed, seven in favor. That carries uh, that bylaw for approval. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Moved by Councillor Madoff, seconded by Councillor Alto. All those in favor? Any opposed? Same in favor, same opposed. That carries. Okay, thank you, Council. I think we should take a five minute recess so we can stand up and. Breathe, and, uh, and then we'll come back. <laughs> Council, public, I'm going to call us back to order. We are on the second public and statutory hearing. This is for a development variance permit application for 501-503 Government Street. And uh, uh, Councillor Young, I believe this is one.